as they say, there is a first time for everything. And today, my cancel me baby listener, my precious, you are about to not believe your ears because I think there is a first time that this happened. Brace yourselves, gird your loins. I think that I was personally kind of insulted and offended. Yes, it's true. What? No, I, I'm telling you. That's what they say. That is what they say. There is a first time for everything. I think that it happened. Am I aligning with the unhinged mob? Am I? I don't know. Let's go on this journey. Let's go on this voyage, on the Instagram model voyage, and find out. So here's the thing. Before I kick this off, before I kick this into gear, you may know by now, if you're a listener of my show, if you're a follower of my work, if you're on board of this train, I have advocated for the following, okay? Sexual expression. Hence, my boobs are kind of out right now. Here we go. Mental health, okay? And free speech. But did I, or did you, or did anybody that walks the soil of planet earth ask for the three to be combined? Did any of us ever ask for this? Well, guess what? There is one said Instagram model, influencer, DJ, entrepreneur, I mean, you name it, who decided it would be a good idea to deliver just that and bring that to our eyeballs, to bring it to Mark Zuckerberg's sphere of terror, okay? I don't even know who this girl is. Her name, I don't know. It's not important, but here's what you need to know, okay? I stumbled across this post, okay? And I'm reading the caption and I'm like, this is intriguing. Now, this girl I'm talking about, again, don't know her name, doesn't really matter, okay? Because I'm sure it's a dime a dozen. I don't follow this type of content or these types of women on IG. But so you get the idea. Seven, oh no, sorry, 4.7 million followers, gorgeous, like quintessential IG model, your ass cheeks in your thong that you thought looked good, honey, they could never, they are shook it. Okay. So she has this again, don't even know how I came across this, but she can't, she writes this whole post and it is like a moment in time. She is talking about her mental health and she says how she herself has dealt with, you name it, anxiety, depression, self-harm, panic attacks. Like this is serious. This is hardcore stuff, right? And she talks about the importance of talking about it and feeling accepted and not feeling so alone. But here's, here's (laughs) speaking of my night terrors. Okay. Here is the day terrors of the realities of Instagram. What coincides with this think piece esque essay is a slideshow a straight up slideshow of this girl's ass crack, her under boob, her perfect abs. Okay. Maybe her rectum. I don't know. I don't know. Someone get Bill Nye to confirm, but either way, what on God's green earth does this caption have any business being in on around near out and about with this slideshow? Okay. I need to know now on the surface, this already is provocative to talk about because right. People would be like, oh, you're anti-women. You're judging. You're this, you're that, you know, you're projecting all of this shit. Now, let me stop you. Let me stop you right there. Let's not forget. Okay. Because People could argue, well, this is her way of fueling and helping her mental health and feeling empowered. Now there, there is a difference. Now let's quit blurring this line, okay, on the tower of terror of her thong. And let's not conflate the two. This is real empowerment. And I'll tell you right now, let's not forget, okay, that I straight up showed my ass as a journalist and a writer in a national iconic magazine, Playboy. And why? Let's not forget. It was to be 
actually empowered and to prove don't for a second misunderstand me because I'm showing you a little side boob and a little butt and uh, no, no, no. And I'll never forget that day shooting on the set of my Playboy feature and looking around and having the makeup artists come and touch us up because it featured other journalists, as you may know, touching us up and the whole crew of, I don't know, a dozen or more people and thinking I did this. I pitched this idea. I am the one who brought this to life and thinking to myself, i this is something I've always wanted to do showing my body and feeling so strong and sexy. And guess what? Later going to put pen to paper and write a piece that will actually impact people and make them think and make them think about this very thing. Right. Don't underestimate me. Don't judge me. Don't think you know how smart I am because I'm showing you my body. Yeah, you can look, but you are about to read a piece later that'll blow your brains that I wrote. Okay. It that I was walking on the moon. I will never forget after the whole thing came to fruition after. And it's, they were kind of coincided one of the same because posing And feeling powerful that way made me feel so much more stoked and powerful to write the essay that went along with the whole concept, right? It's like they fed into one another. And I don't know if I ever felt more empowered than that span of time and particularly that day. That is empowerment. Now, I bring it back. Why are we conflating the two? Okay. I'm somebody who deals with anxiety is real. My night terrors are like the little gremlins, Oompa Loompa's love child, and they are not fun. It is a very real and scary thing. And I'll tell you right now, it is not solved by doing some perfectly photoshopped thong under boob, maybe airbrush, whatever you want to call it, photo shoot. And again, somebody could be like, what are you hating on? What? And here's why. This, I saw this and I was like, this is everything that is wrong with society. Like this is it right here in a nutshell. And I say this too, I, my physical well-being, like the reason I have to hit the gym and pump the iron every day is so I don't turn into Godzilla. Okay. But let me, like, I will straight up be a real life Sybil. You don't even know, hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your Superman, because we're going to get to that guy too. Okay. And all his sexuality. Here's the difference though. There's a difference between your mental health and feeling, you know, your physicality and it, it is all intertwined. Like I said, feeling good and fit and strong and healthy. Okay. There's a difference to me between that and what I, this display I saw here. Okay. And what I found problematic is that it talks all number one. It's, and I also forgot to mention it's an ad for revolve because this person is partnering. So it's like, not only, not only am I going to fuel the demons of women's, what causes half of their mental health is this perfectly sculpted Greek goddess body and being like, but mental health guys. And it's like, but this is the culprit of as if our mental health wasn't screwed enough from this pandemic. Like we are in a real life squid game sidebar. That's why that show is popping. Don't you think? Don't you know? It's because we can all relate and be like the despair, the true despair, somebody help. But that's my point, right? It's like this impacts the women and their mental health. What you're doing here, this like feeds into that (laughs) trauma for that. Knock it off. Okay. Stop pretending something is not in a revolve ad. Nonetheless, nonetheless. Okay. But it's also sad to me. And I think it says so much about society because she talks about feeling, you know, opening up about her mental health. And again, these struggles she talks about are scary and they're real, but she talks about how opening up about them makes her feel accepted and understood. And like, you're not alone guys. And I'm thinking to myself, but this is the way this is, this is the way by having us motorboat you unwillingly on Instagram. Like my feed was doing just, I was fine. I was fine with my Halloween cocktails, my inappropriate political memes. Like I was good. All right. I didn't need this 
with a dissertation about mental, like it, one is not like the other one is not like the other. And that's what's sad is that feeling accepted. This again, sums up society. And this generation is not by really opening up about mental health struggles, but is by posing in this over sexualized way to get the little flame emojis and attention. And yeah, you look so hot and getting that validation. That to me is what is so sad. That is so sad. So you know what? Like I said, you can call me a hater. That is fine. I will say I, like I said, all day long, free expression, sexual expression, however you choose. You know, that was the whole point. It what made me feel so multidimensional. Okay. DC could never as a woman doing the spread that I did to prove that you aren't in a box. You don't have to be one thing, but this again is not that. So I'm not going to say that women and Instagram models can or shouldn't do this. They can do whatever the hell they want, you know, and playing devil's advocate. Some people have said, well, you know, now modeling agencies, they want them to be just, you know, more substantive, more than just a pretty face. You know, they want them to have more weight for their following and have something to say. This ain't it. This ain't it. Okay. So with that, I'm going to say, I'm not going to tell you what to do or not to do, but I'm still going to call it ridiculous and I ain't going to consume it. All right. My feed is popping, but not with that. Now, this got me really thinking because there's so much going in the on in the news right now. And if you hear that, if you listen real closely, it sounds like a little what is it? It's us entering my wheelhouse. Okay. Because there have been so many stories going on lately about sexuality and pop culture and, you know, different, you know, high profile people talking about said topics in such capacities. And it had me thinking an example, a, a for atrocity. No, I'm just kidding. But really example, a, got me thinking about what this whole episode is going to be about, which is <laughs> 13 minutes in, which is again, Joe Rogan could never Joe Rogan hit me up though. Seriously. Conflating sex with everything. Does everything always have to be about sex? But here's the thing though. So now we have this like whole culture of like women doing this kind of shit. And so I saw a video the other day of Candace Owens, the Candace Owens. And yes, to the conservatives who listen to my show, I'm about to challenge Candace Owens. So brace yourselves, hold on to your granny panties. It's about to happen. Okay. No, I know it's, it's going to be okay. I promise you it's going to be okay. Everybody. Okay. So like, what do either side, what does either side hate more than someone challenging them? I will give you the answer for 500 points. Alex Trebek coming up from the grave. Even he is, like I said, he shook it. Okay. So Candace Owens, so she did a video and it was called, I think it was part of a podcast and it's called, why are we cheapening women, sex and marriage? And you know how she rolls. Wait. And can I just say there is probably nothing besides, we all know this mean girls moment, seeing a teacher outside of school, like the awkwardness, you literally want to go into your bunker, Cloverfield lane style, eat canned goods and never come out. It is so awkward. But the next most awkward thing besides that, like what is more awkward? Okay. And I'll give you another example, getting caught by your parents doing it getting caught doing it, which this almost happened to me, I think one time in high school, but that's neither here nor there or listening to a conservative talk about sex. It is the like, Oh my God. No. Again, like my earlier example, no one asked hearing Candace Owens say the word boobs. I'm like, Oh oh my God. Cause you know, they're so uptight about sex. It makes me feel so uncomfortable, but it is so entertaining at the same time. Oh my God. Like imagine just on loop. Tucker Carlson and Candace Owens talking about sex and boobs and penises. Like it's a nighttime lullaby story that you didn't even know, like the com app didn't even know that it needed. All right, let's get Mila Ventimiglia to narrate. And it's going to be a great time. Like REM cycles for days. Okay. So anyway, she taught, and there are things that I agree and disagree with her on. Okay. Because 
What I agree with her on is she talks about this culture I'm talking about here with young women being so over-sexualized, especially on Instagram. She's like, I see this stuff and just what my head is falling off my body. What is going on? Why? And she asks a good question that I often wonder, which is what is like, what is the point? Is it to actually feel good about yourself? Is it for attention? Which I obviously think it is right. And validation. So that I will agree with her on. She kind of is like, what is the point? This is getting out of hand. Can we be any more sexual? if we tried. But here's where I disagree. I don't know if I necessarily disagree, but it I don't I'm not totally on board and it makes me wonder because she talks about this how this kind of behavior is linked to why women are devalue like they're devaluing themselves, they're cheapening themselves and so in turn men are going to slide into their DMs and treat them like an object and not value them yada, yada, yada. It's why they're not going to have like all women. It's so like, it's so Betty Crocker 1950s, but she says like all women, you know, want, and, and there's truth to this too. No, no, no. I'm a traditionalist a little bit in this way, I will admit, but she says all women, you know, want a man who can like provide for them and, and give them security. And they're never going to do it pulling the shenanigans like this kind of shit. You know what I mean? And that's why they're single. That's why they're not you know, settling down. And so this is where I got to interject because first of all, men are struggling, men are struggling. And I don't care. Like, this is another hot button topic because people are like, Oh my God, you let, let them be. You can't say that. It's true. It's a sad ass state of affairs. It's a sad display. These guys are losing grip on how to be men. I have talked about it literally since I was on the playground in kindergarten, it has been a thing. It's evolving into crap fill. It's not a cute look, right? But I don't think that any woman warrants any type of behavior, depending on how sexual they choose to be. In other words, why does being sexual then suddenly warrant shitty behavior from men? I don't think so. And by that logic, can no porn stars ever get married in real life then or have relationships? Like, I don't I don't like that logic and I don't agree with that. Men should treat you with respect, period. You know what I mean? Like, unless you're throwing a frying pan at their head, they need to treat you with respect. And I'll give you an example of this. Okay. I am not a dater. Dating is my arch nemesis because as we've established, I can't stand small talk. I would rather wholeheartedly sit and listen to these CNN quote talk show hosts and anchors defend the craziest, most outlandish shit that they defend. I would rather do that than go on, go on dates. It's just not my thing. And I'm also like, I'm pretty superficial. So I'm going to look at you and be like, I'm into it or I'm not like, remember the game show next PS bring back the savagery. Cause we're all superficial. Like that is my life next click next. But anyway, so I don't like, it. okay. So when I was in LA, I went on one date with this one man and you get to, like, I'm a good time. You know, I'm a respectable, smart, funny, charismatic young lady. I wore a nice black dress, you know, just enough sexy, just enough classy. Like, there you go. Okay. You know, the wet dreams of, you know, a Kate Hudson, how to lose a guy in 10 days moment. And I go out with this guy and it's only because I think it was something where our grandparents, like our poor little grandparents in a retirement community in Florida set us up. He's this like nice average, you know, vanilla Jewish boy. Right. So we go, we get a cocktail. We have a night, you know, again, small chat that I despise. And I leave being like, you know, the vanilla swirl ice cream flavor of tonight was just not my, like could go without seeing this guy again. And I will be happily on my way, you know, no harm, no foul. Right. And you would think he's like a stand-up guy, had his shit together, had a full-time job, was attractive, was nice, straight up ghosted me. And I want to, I don't even want to call it ghosting because it's not even like I was trying to be the sheet to his ghost Halloween costume. Like I said, I didn't care, but even like where this is what I'm talking about with men losing grip. Like where is the common human decency of communication and just being like, Hey, had a great time, you know? Don't think it'll work out, but, you know, glad we had a drink, whatever, something straight up. I don't know where he went. I don't know. Maybe he fell into the Grand Canyon. I don't know. I still don't know. But this is what I mean. Now, did me and my nice little 
black dress. Did I care that much? No, but it's like, you're a loser who just dips out into the aforementioned bunker and just never says anything. And that's what I mean. So it's like, no matter how you dress, no matter how you present yourself, no matter how you act, these guys still be acting like losers. So that's why I agree with Candace Owens. Cause it's or disagree with Candace Owens. Cause it's like, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. I don't think it should be the responsibility of the women for men to be acting like decent, straight up men, human beings with a brain, not hard. So there's that. So that's why I don't know. Again, how connected are these things? Are we pointing at sexuality as the culprit for everything? Now we're going to switch gears a little bit and we're going to get into, yes, the gayness of it all. And can I just say, while we talk about being gay and I'm on my way to slay the day. Oh my God. I'm sorry. Ludicrous who? (laughs) Okay. So I just, I'm thinking about all this because we're going to talk about bisexual Superman and homosexuality and you guessed it, Squid Game, right? Because, you know, the woke has to find an issue with Squid Game, which the audacity, (laughs) but I was thinking about it and I'm like, man, what happened? Like, this is kind of like what Dave Chappelle was saying in his special, his new special. It's like, I feel like the gay community was always our place, like we would live through them for like the liberation, like just the no shits to be given. I remember when I was young and working in the city and I went to the pride parade in the city and I came home, I came home and I looked like a unicorn just had sex with the lucky charm man. Okay. I had like big rainbow beads and necklaces and all this paraphernalia. And I had the best day ever because when you would go to an event like that, that it is just a energy of take me as I am. If not have a pleasant day, I'm going to live my truth. Like so much fun. And now I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened, but I got to agree with Dave Chappelle how he's like, I miss the stone cold, like take it or leave it gaze. Now, I don't know if it's just Twitter or I don't know if this is real life too, but these people are becoming really sensitive. And it's like, this is not what you guys are about. You guys are the backbone of liberation and living our truth. Like, come on, can I get an amen? Okay, so there's that. So this got me all thinking, right? It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a bisexual Superman, but not Superman, his spawn, his son. Okay. If you missed it last week, we found out that Superman's son, John Clark Kent's son, John Kent in next month's comic is going to be bisexual. Now this obviously was a whole brouhaha. It was a whole moment. And this is again, partially why I am sitting I am sitting with my Snickers, with my popcorn, with my whole pizza on my head, watching this shit unfold because it is like you are living in the tale of two worlds because you're looking at the left. You're looking at all these news sites. You're looking at CNN. You're looking at all these networks, right? And they are acting like this is the savior to all that ails us. But then But then you go to the right. They can't believe it. They can't believe their eyes. And they're like, oh my God, the travesty. Half of them are just flat out cruel. And they're like, absolutely not. But then half of them, which I understand are like, here we go with the virtue signaling that never ends. Yes, it goes on and on my friends. Okay. And I'm going to talk about this, but they have some really savage, satire memes and all these kinds of things poking fun of it. Right. So that in and of itself is entertainment of the ages because seeing how these two completely melt down and, or, you know, prop it up. Like it's like nothing they've ever seen before or ever expected. We never expected this to happen, which LOL calling it so brave. It's like, it is so brave to hop on a trend. No, but, um, That in and of itself is the most entertaining thing. And especially how they take digs at one another. It is literally like the kids on your dodgeball team. They thought that they were ruthless, ruthless, my ass. Okay. Cause you have the left being like, oh, of course the right's going to get all uptight about this. And then you have the right being like, of course the left, you know, is making out with it. Like it is just like, no one can get a hold of themselves and it is fucking entertaining, but here's a little bit of backstory for you. Okay. So here's where I find this um, 
funny, okay, is that the man who created this is an Australian white man. I watched him on an interview with CNN. And this is where it's just like the optics of it are hilarious because he's like, you know, we're replacing what these classic superheroes are with what he calls, brace yourselves, a quote, replacing the straight white savior. And I don't know this man's sexual orientation, but by the looks of it, he's a straight white savior of DC comics now. So is it, are you replacing yourself? But no, again, nothing ever makes sense. We're living in a simulation, but we've established that. Okay. So I will say, I, listen, the bisexual Superman, it doesn't bother me. I don't care. And actually it was really heartwarming listening to this man who created it. Talk about the reception he got. He said he got reactions from people around the, I don't know, actually, I don't know from where I'm just like using this for dramatic effect, but he, okay. He got reaction from people who were in tears and were crying and felt so good and hopeful that they were actually being seen. And I thought that that was really nice. I did. I thought, and I'm not even being sarcastic. Okay. There's a beat in heart in here. You know, what's funny is the sidebar is I'm pretty like cut. I'm pretty savage on the show, but in real life, I, my, I'm the biggest, I overthink everything. I overthink, like if one person's feelings are hurt, I will sit and sulk and be up all night. My aforementioned night terrors all night crying about it. Okay. So there's that, but anyway, looks are deceiving. Okay. Jack of all trades, honey. Okay. So anyway, that was the nice part. I said, you know, I said, that's really nice. I'm glad that he got that reception and I'm glad people felt so uplifted and seen by it. And you know, inspired, but the problem I do have with it. And that a lot of people are saying, even a fellow, a former Superman, uh, actor said, and I quote, this is bandwagoning, not brave. And that's the issue I find. And that's what a lot of you guys are saying too, is that people call this like the mainstream and Twitter and the CNNs of it all. They call it brave. And to me, like this isn't, it just, it does. It feels like hopping on a trend that we're all sort of expecting. And I've talked about it before, but it's what provokes people and causes them to roll their eyes. Not that it's not the thing itself, but that people act like it's so revolutionary when it's like, even Nostradamus is bored by this shit. He could have predicted this. Like nobody is surprised. Do you know? And that's why it doesn't feel I don't know how genuine it actually feels, especially coming from a white man who's like, we are going to eradicate these white male superheroes. It's like, oh my God, dude. And it's also sad because it's an example of you're not able to win. You're not able, like nothing is enough on top of it. As, as if, you know, forget the fact, you know, aside from the fact that it already feels kind of going through the motions and like the cool trendy thing to do. You can't win even if you stand up for it. So here's an example. Jamila Jamil. I talk about her often and I've met her and she's a super cool chick. She's very outspoken. She's on the show, The Good Place. And she posted about this saying, this shouldn't be a big deal. And if it's a big deal to you, this is the reason it needed to happen. You uptight dinosaurs, AKA the right. And she said, little kids should feel like love is love. It shouldn't just be Lois Lane and Clark Kent. And, you know, this, if any, it's not a big deal. Like if anything, this should have happened sooner and believe it or not, believe it. I'm coming out with all these surprises today. Chris Nolan, his little twists and turns and, you know, Shutter Island. They could never because she got shit. She got flack from people on her Instagram post writing. Well, what do you mean? It's not a big deal. Yes, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. And she's even the defending herself being like, I think I'm making it clear, like I'm advocating for this, but no, they have to find something wrong with her supporting it. They're like, why are you downplaying it as if it's not a big deal? It is a big deal. So it just goes to show why bother bitch, (laughs) because either way, someone's coming for your ass. Okay. And so Also, you know, here's the other side. Oh, and this is what I forgot. I forgot to mention this as well. Here's another thing that's like cringe about it to me. I don't give a shit that this guy is by. I've said this example before, but Ruby Rose on Orange is the New Black, 
that shit was revolutionary. Again, before it was the cool thing to do. Androgynous, didn't really know which way she went, like all about it. I don't give a shit that he's bi. I don't care. You know, if it's in the safety of their homes and their dick lasers blasting off with consent, honey, I don't give a shit. Okay. But here's what happens then in turn of this, like in turn of the woke brigade is then you have the right making fun of it. And uh, there's some truth in these memes, right? Like you have one and it's like, you know, the Babylon B, I think, which we all know is a satire site, but it had one that's like, the LGBTQ plus superheroes kryptonite is going to be getting called the wrong pronoun, right? And I've seen people write on these posts and they'll say things like social justice league or instead of Aquaman, aqua person or aqua slash he, aqua he slash him instead of man. Do you get it? And so, but there, you know, is it mean? I don't know. I mean, maybe I think there's some truth in it though, right? It's like that idea that, you people are all up in arms if you don't do or say things the exact right way in this exact right little box. You know, there is some truth to that. And I have to say, as a sidebar, I saw a brilliant clip Joe Rogan posted with Bari Weiss. I've talked about her before. She's a New York Times former employee who went rogue because she hated the woke stuff. And she talks about this. And this is what bugs me is the CNN guy, Brian, whatever his name is, is saying to her, I, and I can't stand when people say this, well, what do you mean? We can't talk about stuff. What do you mean? You know, we're talking about her. You can go and say whatever you want. And what she, her response is the essence of, well, yeah, technically, but actually not because if you do, you're punished, you are, you know, suspended, you have to resign, you have to write an apology. So is that being able to say whatever we want? Like get a clue guys. So That whole thing. My point is, though, you know, you have both extremes, no one seeing eye to eye. And then you have in turn the people who are against all the woke stuff, just mocking it and making fun of it like the aforementioned. Right. And so here's what I feel like. Here's what I feel like encapsulates this all and this idea. It's like, does sex need to be brought into anything? Do we need does the sexuality of a superhero need to be a big stink period? Like, do we need to know? And I know people will come at me and being like, well, what about Clark Kent and Lois Lane? Okay. Well then scratch that shit. Like who cares? None of us are dating in real life anyway. So I don't think we're going to care that much if it's being C it's an obsolete concept. Okay. (laughs) No, but there is an idea. It's like, aren't superheroes just supposed to represent being strong and about your morals and principles? And standing up for what's right. And I thought a line, there was a Washington Post article that was in support of the bisexual Superman by a gay man. And his whole article is saying it should have happened sooner. That whole idea, like, congratulations, but this is nothing. Like, why are we applauding, you know, the the scraps, the leftovers, like the son of Superman is by whatever. But he has a line in it that I really liked. And he says, being as a gay man, he says, being different is what makes us strong. And I feel like that goes for all superheroes, man, women, they, that doesn't matter. Like they are their own, they are marching to the beat of their own drum, right? They're different. And that's what makes them special. And that's what makes us feel inspired watching them. So strip their, I mean, what, again, what can their sexuality play a part in that? Sure. But does it have to be everything like we're making this to be? I don't think so. I think that they can just be these larger than life characters that we feel warm and fuzzy and go feel like to go kick ass after watching and take the world by storm. So maybe it doesn't need to be about their sexuality is what I'm trying to say now. Again, with making sexuality something that now something that to me was like the should be the Bible of wokeness. I have been jerking off to the show for five straight days is squid game. Brilliant, amazing show. But in theory, I'm not talking about the themes that squid game talks about, which if you have exited your rehabilitation and your therapy sessions from watching the show, congratulations. Good to see you. Uh, ditto. Yes, we will exchange notes, but 
on the surface, this should be what everything the woke is about and true, honest, genuine, authentic, in my mind, representation and inclusion. Okay. Created by a Korean man, entire cast is unknown Koreans who, by the way, I've decided Koreans blow you out of the water and they have perfect teeth in every way possible. They have perfect teeth. They're amazing entertainers like K-pop. They can dance. They can sing. They can do it all. They're the tripe. Like, don't even try. But this cast is like, I love it. I love seeing fresh faces that we don't know. Like, yes, I will get off to a good Brad Pitt moment any day, but I'm just saying it incredible, incredible acting story is just out of this world. Says so much about us as humans. And the show, by the way, is in Korean. It's in, okay, it doesn't get much more, like I said, inclusive than that. And did I mention this man had his script turned down for a decade, okay? These dinosaurs, talk about dinosaur, these dinosaur networks with no vision. Hi, by the way, it's me. Yeah, you know me, you know me are kicking themselves. They're rolling in their graves because this show is the number one show in 90 countries. It is the top performing show in all of Netflix history. Okay. So again, what a triumph you would think, but no, you thought wrong because I see an article I'm over here, like taking in every moment of this cast, taking in everything they ever said or did when I come across this article. Okay. And it's called, it's by digital spy and it's called squid game plays into a harmful homophobic trope. And then it says in small letters, this could have been handled better. I'm not laughing to mock it or make fun of it, but I'm and this clearly was written by a gay man. So here's a little spoiler. Okay. In the scene where the hot ass Korean cop is with one of the elite VIPs, this very, you know, scummy, obviously powerful man. They're in this back private room unwillingly to the young cop and the old man tries to force him to give him a blowjob. And he says, if you do this, I'll let you live. This is like, by the way, the hunger games is a nighttime fable. Okay. Compared to this. Otherwise like you're dead. I'll ruin your life. And the whole article talks about how they should have done better because it paints gay men in this like trope that they're sleazy or they're harmful or they're, you know, going to do this inappropriate stuff and be and like assault you and all these things. And I'm thinking to myself, okay. Number one, it's like, number one, do we have to pick apart squid game, which like I just said, which like I just said, in theory should be a woke shrine. Okay. But further, do we forget again, amnesia, the whole reason me too and times up kicked off was because the expose on the Harvey Weinstein, a straight man. Hi. Okay. Anybody, anybody home? That's what I'm talking about. This scene wasn't about being gay. It didn't matter that he was gay. It talks about how people in powerful positions are disgusting and do abhorrent shit. Sexuality aside, come for Squid Game again, and you'll have to see me and all five one of me personally, honey. But my point is, again, made to be about sexuality when it really wasn't. Stop it. Can we enjoy anything? Stop. All right. Progress isn't tearing everybody up all the time. Sometimes you're allowed. You're allowed to applaud. You're all I know. Don't tell Twitter. I told you. OK, so lastly, to bring it all back to the beginning, I got <laughs> besides Squid Game, I for whatever reason, like I'm not personally really invested in Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox's relationship, but I came across this interview that they did with GQ and it was really entertaining. Watch the whole thing. Okay. 10 minutes. I don't regret not going to lie. And I was really impressed because Megan Fox, like she is somebody who is the ultimate She's like a sex icon. She's super sexed out all the time. Her roles arguably have been her Instagram, right? Even of late at award shows, she'll wear these sheer dresses that show off. I'm talking like a perfect body, okay? Victoria's Secret even is crying. They're like, what? Like perfect body, perfect in every way, has the long black hair, the piercing blue eyes, is just gorgeous. 
And she posted a lot. She posted a lot, but I was really kind of taken back and I shouldn't have been because of my whole effort and everything that I did in Playboy. Right. But I was really taken aback because she was very smart. She used big words. Even some, I was like, oh, what? excuse me, thesaurus, where are you? And even Machine Gun Kelly, he's like, she knows so many facts. She's an, he calls her an almanac, an encyclopedia, a, a dictionary all in one. And she was so smart. And I thought to myself, I just was so pleasantly surprised. Again, I shouldn't be, but I was so present, pleasantly surprised. And funny enough, a couple of days later, I saw a headline that in another interview that they did with GQ, she talked about how, even though she has this perfect body and image, she herself suffers from what she calls deep insecurities and has body dysmorphia where she doesn't think she looks as fire as she looks clearly and has deep rooted insecurities and hangups about it. Basically, she says the people who you see doing this don't necessarily feel that way about themselves. Like the Instagram model I thought about earlier. And I had to say with all of this said, and as vulnerable and as honest as she was, and as sexy as her whole image and persona is, given this passage, this right of sexuality passage that we have been on today, I have to say, I appreciated so much that she talked about this and was super smart and was super honest about herself without having the need to simultaneously show one single centimeter of her butt crack. 